Hello to everybody and uh, welcome to our mechanical engineering virtual meetup, uh, our January session. And uh, today's focus is uh, design accelerator as well as uh, update from inventor product management team. So today we have Lauren Welch uh, as a guest, uh, Tom Tremblay, uh, who will share his uh, presentation on design accelerators and myself, uh, your host, Anton Fedosiev. So quick reminder about uh, the uh, webinar basics or how we run them. Uh, all lines are muted at the moment to reduce uh, background noise uh, because we want to have high quality recording that will be distributed to you in, in a couple of days. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, either raise your hand or type the question at any point of time because uh, the sessions are intended uh, for you to ask questions. Uh, have, uh, have a little bit of you know dy dynamic conversations between us um, and uh, to test it actually I think uh, we can uh, use it right now uh, to share our locations so for example um, I'm uh, running this uh, webcast from uh, Portland uh, Oregon and if you could just uh, drop a line saying hey my name is blah 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 and um, I'm connected from Chicago or whatever, uh, wherever your location is. So we will test the Q&A. All right, um, then shortly, quick reminder about mechanical engineering meetups. Uh, so the concept is uh, to run uh, webinars on regular cadence and uh, our cadence is every second Thursday of each month. So you can see uh, on the slide, you can register three sessions ahead. Today, we're in January. Uh, next uh, session, February, is going to be about factory design. Uh, and March session is going to be focused on uh, product simulation. So we'll have a rotation topics, uh, guest speakers like, uh, for example, Lauren today. Um, and um, we're, we're covering also extra topics in other series about uh, generative design you can also register to them by the same link that I will drop in the chat window in, in a couple of seconds. Uh, in, in addition to the uh, virtual meetups for mechanical engineers, we have other professions as well. You can see them on the screen. So if yourself or um, any of your colleagues are interested in other design domains, uh, feel free to refer them to uh, those extra virtual meetups. All right, and uh, let's go to the main agenda. Uh, so today we have uh, Lauren, the representative of Inventor Product Management team. So we will talk a little bit about the future and as uh, usual, Safe Harbor statement uh, that um, the future plans may change. Uh, so please keep that in mind. And with that, I'd like to give the stage uh, to Lauren. Uh, Lauren, let me switch the presenter to yourself. Okay. All right, let me know when that comes up for yep. everybody. We can see your screen. All right, and of course, I'm too many slides back, so I won't repeat Anton's slides. I'll hop into mine. So uh, real quick, um, as Anton said, my name is Lauren Welch. I'm a product manager here on the Inventor product line. And uh, a lot of what I wanted to cover today was the, our, our latest update of Inventor 2020, uh, which was dot two, which was released right before AU back in November. And then um, also talk a little bit about what we're doing um, with the public roadmap and some of the areas we're investing in the product going forward. Um, what I will do is I am going to turn off my camera um, just because I do have a couple videos and I don't want to kill the bandwidth when I'm presenting that, um, but I'll hop back on the video um, as well. And again, as Anton mentioned, if you have questions, uh, please type them in and, and we can handle those questions as we go through. Um, clearly, I need help with the Q&A because I answered uh, somebody else's location with my location instead of actually typing it in as a question. So getting the, the rust knocked off as we start the year, I guess. So that being said, um, let's go ahead and, and hop into this. So one of the things um, hopefully you've heard about and hopefully you've been a part of this for, for many of these years, I know, I know Tom has been a part of every 20 plus uh, for Inventor. And uh, we're, we're really proud of the fact that Inventor is reached a, a milestone of 20 years in the market um, as of last September. And it, it really has been a customer driven and customer focused uh, process. And 
we look forward to a, another 20 years of, of customer-driven enhancements and, and delight. When we talk specifically about what we've done with uh, the DOT updates uh, for 2020.2, one of the things I, I really like to talk about is, is where, where we drive those enhancements from. So a lot of them come from our engagement in, in customer success team and, and other projects we're working on. So one of the things you'll you'll see is we have this um, the inventor ideas page, the forums, the feedback community, um, as well as direct customer engagement, and we've revived this idea of what we call JDI or or just do it. So there's been a lot of things where we've been meeting with customers or we get feedback and we're like, you know what, that's something doesn't take that long to do. A, de a developer or two can knock that out in a, in a couple of weeks. We should just do it. And so. We've revived a lot of that that mentality of uh, of just do it on customer feedback, and I and hopefully you see a lot of that um, with what's happening um, in the product with the updates. So we'll walk through again. This is not inclusive. Um, if if you want to see every single update for 2020.2, I encourage you to go to the online help file, um, and and I can make sure we have that link available as well, um, just to see every every detail of the enhancements and, and, and also any fixes we put in the release. So one of the things we did is we found out, um, well not found out, but one of the things we, we know from our, our customers is that about 40% of Inventor customers also have um, or use AutoCAD in some way, shape or form. And so making sure that we can smoothly move that, that DWG data inside of Inventor to continue the design process, whether it's on legacy data or, or data you're getting from vendors or suppliers is, is really important. So we've we've continued to add and streamline the functionality of the, the DWG workflows um, into Inventor, and we, we've added some nice prompts and workflow enhancements for 2020.2. For import-export, um, again, um, the AnyCAD and import-export workflows that we, we've had in place for, for many, many years um, we added JT support um, some time ago, but with the ad, with the continued adoption of, of 3D annotations and, and MBD information, we've now added the graphical support of, M, of PMI for JT, both import and export. So if you're using the MBD or 3D annotation environment in Inventor, or if your vendors and suppliers are using it in a different CAD system, um, using JT, they can now move that data um, in and out of Inventor. Um, in a very uh, direct and nice way with just the file open. Frame generator, um, hopefully you've been noticed, is getting quite a bit of a, attention and love over the last uh, couple of releases, and 2020.2 is, is no change. So we've added some ex uh, advanced category filtering when you're selecting your, your profiles and members, and we've also added some improvements to the insert and change um, as far as the, the rotation and angle of those members when they're placed in the environment. So here there's a, a video, hopefully it's coming through. So you can see the, the nice glyphs in the graphic area that allow you to very quickly and easily uh, rotate both graphically or on the left in the property panel, you could simply type in a rotation angle. Um, but these are a lot of the improvements that users have asked for um, with the frame generator environment that the customer success team has been able to implement. Um, very quickly. You'll see here with a shift and a click, it automatically jumps to 45 degrees, which really helps with that rotation. Um, we've also done some work with tube and pipe, uh, again, about giving customers both performance benefits uh, as well as uh, workflow benefits, in this case, specifically with uh, filtering content as it comes in and is, is how they handle some of the routes and the derived routes that get created in tube and pipe workflows. So this is an area um, I'd continue to, um, to encourage you to take a look at if you are a tube and pipe user, um, continue bringing the feedback uh, to the team about what you'd like to see. And also, um, you know, any feedback you have on enhancements we're putting in, uh, by all means, let us know. The, the drawing environment is another area where we've gotten feedback uh, where people wanted to see some enhancements. So we added um, things like being able to copy tables um, within the same sheet for uh, quicker creation and access, and then um, adding things like the apply button to the hatch dialog, which, which might seem like a, a little enhancement, but if you've ever done a bunch of hatching manually and you've had to hit okay and then enter and go back into the command, um, just by adding that apply, we're able to obviously save users uh, quite a few clicks and steps with multiple uh, hatch applications. 
One other thing that we're doing, especially for those of you that are collections customers, is we found that a lot of our collections customers weren't aware of what they even had um, as inventor users as part of the collection. And so um, we, we're starting with tolerance analysis um, just because it's, it's one of the ones that uh, people were probably least aware of that they had access to in the collection. So in the product, you'll see this, um, the icon for tolerance analysis will be we grayed out with a download icon next to it to alert you that you do have access to it and, and a nice overview video of what it is, why, you know, why it could be valuable to your organization, and then how to download and install it. So that's some of the stuff we're putting in the product just to help drive awareness of, of what you as a user um, have access to. So that again, that's a high level of, of 2020.2. Um, I will put make sure you have the link um, for the, the full help documentation and, and examples there. But I wanted to give you kind of a quick highlight for those of you that were, were not aware of what was available in dot two. Some other things that came out right around the same time as 2020.2 is we did launch uh, design automation uh, for Inventor on Forge. So that's now commercially available, not only for Inventor's design automation engine, but also for Revit, 3D Studio Max, and AutoCAD. And what we're really doing is we're we're focusing on how we can uh, leverage the Forge platform for our Inventor users um, who want to kind of extend their data and their automation uh, beyond their desktop and, and really not have to worry about inventor licensing, but only really paying for when automation is being run and what they're using. So anything that you have done um, either in iLogic or any custom add-ins that you've done, you can convert those to Forge plugins. Um, you can leverage the existing APIs and you can run those in a, in a headless cloud environment, whether you're doing uh, engineering automation, sales configuration, um, extending your iLogic um, models, or you're doing some more of these um, import-export um, operations, custom interoperability between um, different products, both inside and outside of Autodesk. So if you have a, a CATIA file and you want to get it into a Revit format, you can leverage the inventor translators to do that uh, via Forge. Um, you can automate, obviously, drawing creation, bill and material extraction, and then more of kind of the, um, the bulk operations where you want to do a lot of things that maybe are job processor type of, of workout works um, and do that all via, via Forge and the design automation APIs on Inventor. So if you go to forge.autodesk.com um, and look at the design automation links, uh, there's a ton of documentation um, around that. And it's, it's something that if you are interested, by all means, uh, reach out and, and we'll be as helpful as possible. One of the other things, um, as Anton mentioned, why we have the safe harbor statement is we want to talk a little bit about what we're doing uh, investment wise going forward. And so we do have a, a public roadmap that we published during AU and similar to what the Revit 3D Studio Max and Fusion teams do, uh, we plan on maintaining and keeping um, that public roadmap up to date. It was a fun conversation with legal over the last six months to get that approved and out and we want to continue uh, showing our users and getting feedback on where we're looking to invest in the product line. And, and when we look at investing from an inventor perspective, it, it's really around these areas of experience, insight, and automation. Um, so what we're saying is any, any project or initiative we do or any functionality we add into inventor should be providing uh, areas in, in this area for our end customers. It should improve um, their overall uh, experience um, and workflows within Inventor. Um, we should have some level of, of automation or intelligence as part of it and provide the user some insight. Um, so when we talk about insight, you know, today we can see what commands are being used most in Inventor and things like that, but we're not really showing anything back to the user as far as how to help them use Inventor better or more effectively. And that's an area we're going to invest in heavily. Um, the first thing you, you've seen on that is um, Vault, when they released their update um, recently, it included a duplicate search, which gives you insight on the data that you create and manage in Vault. So if you're not aware of um, what Vault can do with duplicate search, I encourage you to take a look at that. And that's kind of a first step to a lot of the insights we're looking at providing. So one of the things we can do is we've been able to see like how many commands are being used in Inventor, but going forward, we're really tracking what we call this command flow. So we can see from the time somebody opens Inventor, um, all the way through, you know, what commands they use, what they use before, and what they use after it. So when we look at improving a command or improving a workflow, we want to take a look at this command flow and see if users kind of jump back and forth a lot 
and the whole commando is a good example. That's one of the reasons we chose to uh, move that to the modern uh, panel architecture is because we found people were going in and out of the whole command a lot before they completed it. They were going back and forth between sketching um, and a variety of tools. Um, and if you look, um, we also, with the whole command, this is an experienced user in, this is the eye tracking study that we did um, with the legacy whole command. Um, you can see with the new whole command, that panel, we reorganized it so it's very concise. The user has a very good focus of, as they complete um, a task or they fill out information, they move down uh, the panel dialogue and then they complete the command. So what this ends up doing for our users is if you look at the, the graphs there, um, with the legacy whole command, um, inexperienced users is that that tall bar on the on the left. So the you know new users to Inventor, it took them you know almost 10 minutes to create you know a, a simple plate with four holes because of some of the confusion of the whole command as far as where to start, what to click, do they have to do a sketch first or not? Um, and experienced users could do it pretty pretty quickly. The thing that's really compelling is if you look on the right, that those two bars there, that taller bar, the green one there, is the inexperienced users. So with the new panel, a new user to inventor was more efficient than an experienced user on the old whole command. And these are the types of things we want to bring to our users from a, a productivity standpoint when we look at refreshing any command. Uh, we certainly don't want to make a command or make Inventor look different just to make it look different. Um, I think that would just upset everybody. But these are the things that we're tracking uh, in looking at going forward as we continue to enhance um, and move, add, add new commands and, and enhance existing commands. Um, with 2020, we had this light theme, which uh, for the most part, I would say has been really positive. I think the the only negative uh, feedback we've gotten from, from you users is that you want a dark theme as well. Um, so if you are part of the feedback community or if you are at AAU, you might have seen this, but one of the things that is well in the works is um, be able to switch to a, a dark theme. And what this means is not just that you know, we, we changed a few colors. It's it's a complete theme inside of Inventor. So all of your, your canvas, your ribbon, your browser, your toolbars, um, any of your right-click menus, all had to adapt to this environment. So it's, it's very comprehensive. Um, we didn't want to put anything out there that was kind of half-baked. Um, and we're looking for additional feedback as we start rolling this out on, are there things that, um, are not what users expected? Are there things that we need to improve? But one of the things you'll see going forward is, is obviously these, these light themes, these dark themes are uh, common across Autodesk products. So um, AutoCAD, Inventor, Revit, et cetera, um, are all adopting these same uh, color schemes and, and iconology. So for those of you that use multiple Autodesk products, it will be a, a, a consistent experience across the board. Um, some other things we're working on is, is how our products work uh, between each other. So Inventor has been able to read in RVT files uh, for some time and also been able to write out RFAs um, or IFC files. So those of you that are in this environment where you have to work with um, engineering firms or back and forth with the AEC environment, uh, one of the first things we're doing is how can we get Revit data into Inventor better? So if you're familiar with our AnyCAD workflows um, with with file formats like Solid Edge, SolidWorks, Katia, Creo, uh, Wildfire, uh, NX, etc., you know we're able to bring those files in natively, and they update associatively as if they're native Inventor files. So it only makes sense that when we added the AnyCAD for Fusion, it works the same way, and we want to do the same thing with AnyCAD for Revit. So you can bring in a Revit file uh, much more intelligently with advanced kind of filtering to focus on just the area that you need to work on as an Inventor user. But if the Revit user updates that, that, that Revit file, you can pull that update into Inventor associatively. Um, we're also continuing to focus on performance. I, I think that's something as users, um, you know, the, the more uh, we improve performance, the bigger, more nasty assemblies you guys throw at it, which is, is awesome. Uh, we had a user in Europe um, actually a couple months ago, opened a 1.2 million uh, component assembly. Um, our average assembly files in Inventor are getting bigger and bigger, and we see users working on 400,000 plus component assemblies on a regular basis now. So we know we have to continue 
improving and continue working on performance to, to let you guys push um, your designs um, through the process even, even more so in Inventor. And uh, there's a lot more we're working on, obviously. Um, I would encourage you to get involved and stay informed. So I've added these links in here. So obviously the feedback community is our alpha and beta site where you can test a lot of these projects that I just uh, showed you that aren't quite released yet. And you can provide feedback directly to the devel development teams that are working on it. Um, obviously the inventor ideas and general forums are a great place for you to, to put your ideas up, interact with other users, and also interact with the inventor development team. Um, there is the inventor blog. That's where the public roadmap is posted. Um, if, if you're into social media, um, you know, I put the Autodesk Inventor uh, Twitter account on there um, where they provide a lot of updates um, as well. There's also an Inventor Users LinkedIn group and an Inventor uh, Facebook page as well. So you could be as engaged as you want. Um, I think Tom is probably on all six or seven of those um, on a regular basis. So it's not just the development team, but it's also our Inventor uh, Elite experts that are out there as well. So. Uh, hopefully, um, you guys enjoyed it. I, I appreciate the time this morning, and I will go ahead and turn it over to you, uh, Tom. Let me switch it over to you. You want to switch it, Anton, or I'm trying to? I will, I will do it in a second. All right. So let me switch the control to Tom. Um, okay, Tom. All right. Yeah, quick um, reminder or to give you context about like uh, um, what, what what was happening a while ago. A couple of months ago, Tom already presented in this uh, virtual meetup with a very interesting topic, a productive uh, mechanical design in 2D environment when we spoke about design accelerators, gear generators, shaft generators in AutoCAD mechanical, right? And then, I mean, I, I think to me it was very inspirational. So it feels like like I was going back in times when I saw that functionality first time in my life. And now we're taking exactly the same project, the same reduction gear that Tom designed, and we're looking uh, like at how to design it in Inventor and how much easier and nicer it's going to look. So without any like further uh, to you, like Tom, it's uh, the stage is yours. All right, and you're able to hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so with Inventor, you know, I've been around a long, very long time. Started using Inventor when it was new. It's been amazing to see the tool. Uh, at AU, I was able to sit through uh, the presentation from the Inventor team on that you basically just saw. And it's just stunning to see how things are, are developing. With that said, some of the other some other important things about Inventor are to kind of revisit what's already there that maybe people aren't aware of or aren't taking advantage of. And that's really where this course that's being posted came from. The idea of design accelerators, there are so many new people coming to Inventor and so many people who've been on Inventor who are so busy getting things done that sometimes it's, it's hard to step back and see what other workflows might be there. So that's why we built this course around design accelerators, very much along the same workflow as we did in AutoCAD Mechanical, but of course in 3D. So for those of you who are new to the term design accelerators, let's, let's take just a couple of minutes and talk about what they are. They're really machine design focused tools that are built into Inventor. They come in two primary classes, generators. Um, those focus on the standard components, the things that you will buy or the things that are driven by standards. So for example, you might or might not purchase gears. You might broach your own gears or, or build your own gears, um, but they're generally going to be based on standards. Uh, bearings are things that are, you're just gonna go out and buy the bearings and, and the clips and the nuts and the bolts and the belts and the chains. Those are all things that are generators. So those will create the physical geometry of the machine component in Inventor, but you can also still take advantage of the second part, which is the calculation. Um, the calculation will allow you to size the gear, size the belt, size the bolt, based on the working conditions it has to endure, the engineering requirements. The second class of design accelerators are just the calculators. So for those things that are genuinely unique, uh, things like brakes, things like uh, 
or calculating out beams. Those are things that might be based on standard elements, but your application is going to be potentially completely unique. So you get the calculation to tell you what you need, and then you'll go and create the geometry. There's also a great uh, handbook uh, built into the design accelerators. What this does, it gives you the formulaic background where Inventor got the answer for you. So you can compare it to how you typically create your, or come to your conclusions or calculate your, uh, your components and uh, make sure that everything jibes or that you understand how Inventor is coming at it. Now with these tools, there's one other important thing to remember. And as you go through this course, you'll see it being used, which is that design accelerator components need to be edited or deleted using a special tool. And it's a very simple marking menu access, so nothing difficult to it. But because the design accelerators replace so many steps that you would have to use using traditional Inventor, they've built in these special editing tools to just make sure everything stays synced up and working properly. So the course itself uh, comes with some different materials. There's videos for each of the hands-on exercise, exercises. There's five of those. Plus there's two additional videos. One gives you kind of an overview of what design accelerators are. The other touches on a couple of the additional tools that aren't necessarily gone through step by step, but perhaps, for example, like the spring. You might want to know how that was calculated. It helps remind you how to access that. Each one of these videos, the step by step instructions and the data sets for them come separated. So maybe you're not so interested in belt drives, but you want to understand how to make gears. Well, you don't have to complete an entire sequence or go through the entire course. You can just go to one of the lessons and be able to go from there and just do that one portion and come back later and maybe do a completely different portion. There's no requirement to do them in a sequence. So the subjects that are covered, I mentioned, you start out with the design accelerator overview. Then you use the shaft generator to create a couple of different shafts. Um, including, and there's some additional elements built in, so for example, the involute splines. Then there's the gear generator, but you also go ahead and add bearings to the, the shafts in that process. The belt and chain generator, the bolted connection generator, and then the frame generator. And the frame generator, as Lauren was showing you just a little bit ago, is really getting much easier to use. And with the addition of tools like reuse, uh, is really getting very friendly for bill of materials. So for those of you who might have used Frame Generator years ago and found, you know, maybe it wasn't fitting quite into your workflow when it comes to your bill of materials, come back and revisit Frame Generator. Not only is it easier to use, uh, it, it's really gone undergone some nice structural changes as well. And then there's the additional tools I mentioned. When it comes to the content itself, the hands-on materials are just going to be in PDF format, so you can print them out, put them on your screen, follow along. And of course, you have the videos themselves, which if you're more a visual learner like I am, you can just simply watch the videos. It will guide you through the process, pause them, rewind them, do whatever you need to do, and it will take you through that process. I'm actually going to turn my volume down a little bit. And you'll see that it's just going to walk through the process take you through the dialog boxes. We get into a little bit of discussion on what the various elements are, but it's just a, a quick way to, to pick up a new set of tools, a new set of skills. And of course you wanna share them with any coworkers or, or people that you know who might also be doing machine design. So help their productivity as well. Uh, finally, on the concept of design accelerators, I also want to show you a little overview of what else is available. In italics are the items that are covered in the course, which there are quite a few of those, but there are also tons and tons of other tools, all the pins, um, additional tools within frame generator we didn't get into, um, some of the power transmission tools, including the uh, calculators that aren't uh, gone into in, as in depth. But one thing about design accelerators, 
as Lauren referred to as well, is a lot of work has gone into trying to make dialogues um, more consistent, the workflows consistent, so that if you go through the shaft generator or the spur gear generator, but maybe you use more worm gears or bevel gears, you'll notice a lot of the same visual cues. You'll notice this, the consistency in the dialogue layout, which will make it very easy for you, especially since you know what you make, to be able to pick up the information, figure out what information is needed for you to generate the machine components that you need for your designs. So hope that you'll take some time. Um, I think Anton will be sharing some information either today or in upcoming uh, posts about how to access the course. Hope you'll take the time to, uh, to try it out and, and let us know what you think. Anton, do you want to? Yeah, thank you so much, Tom. Thank you so much for sharing. And I will uh, demonstrate uh, the course live and exactly how you you can access it right now. But before that, I wanted to ask Lauren, uh, Lauren, like, do you remember your first experience with uh, design accelerators or like uh, with uh, similar type of features when you you know designed everything manually and then you you know you you discovered it? So what what did you feel back then? <laughs> Yeah, I think the biggest thing with design accelerators, I feel like they're the best kept secret in Inventor, to be quite honest. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, the last 12, 13 years when I've worked with customers that have been on Inventor for many of the 20 years we've been in existence, I bring up, I bring up things like the design accelerators and they don't even know they exist. And so, I, this, uh, you know, this kind of thing that Tom's doing, I think is amazing because the calculators, especially the weld, Calculator is probably the one I've probably used the most because, you know, it's basically replacing that engineer's handbook we all have sitting on our desk or on a bookshelf somewhere, right? Where if I want to go in and I need to calculate uh, different things, you know, before I start designing, you know, like the, the shaft and the pin generator are super helpful. But yeah, the weld bead one is the one I use all the time. Like what I'm not, I'm not a fabrication guy. I'm not a weld guy. So when I'm doing something, I want to make sure I'm specifying the, the right weld strength for what I'm designing. And I found that's that's been awesome because you've got the beam calculator right in there. You put your, you know, your your weld beach in size and everything. And I don't know, that's the one I that always sticks out in my mind. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to turn it uh, to our audience as well a little bit. If you have any stories or like your learnings about design accelerators, uh, let us know. Or if you were not aware about them at all, also please let us know out of curiosity. It would be great for us to know. Um, just uh, use the Q&A uh, window to do that. Uh, well, uh, my story was, I think I, I shared it last time, but uh, it was also pretty uh, interesting because I was working on my big design uh, like it was like a big machine uh, gearbox and um, then everything went really well and then uh, my manager asked me to change what I was working on and then this is where the problem started because I realized that it will take me you know the same amount of time as I did it originally to change it and then I started looking for a solution and this is how I found you know uh, design accelerators yeah. um, okay uh, can you see my screen um, yes um, the web browser okay excellent so this is the learning platform that we provide to all of our customers, right? And in order to access it, you need to use your Autodesk ID. It's exactly the same account that uh, you use uh, to, uh, you know, to access your subscription and your products. And now uh, we split it by design disciplines, right? You can see several design disciplines uh, here, and a lot of them are in AEC space. Uh, but recently, we started publishing. Uh, courses uh, around um, mechanical engineering, right? And it's not replacing product tutorials or uh, product-based training, but what it does, it it shares some of the whys behind uh, some certain dis design decisions that you make. And also we focus on best practices of how to use um, our tools. Uh, the one that uh, Tom created and we uh, published a couple of months ago focuses on product productivity with uh, 2D design when we talk about how to use AutoCAD mechanical really efficiently and get uh, the best you can out of it. 
we have two courses there. And then the one that we covered today is uh, mechanical design with intent, uh, where we cover not only you know design generators, but also some of the calculations as associated with them. Uh, so in order to access this, you just sign in uh, with your Autodesk ID. Um, here we are, it automatically picked it up uh, for myself. And then I, I start the course. And then this is where I can see the introduction. I can download the, the files. Um, and uh, obviously, I can go ahead and complete the course, watch all the videos. Um, and um, uh, as a result, you get the knowledge and also the skill, because we provide you not only the videos, but also the, the exercises so you can build the muscle almost um, at the same time. So uh, with that, um, I think I'd like to uh, start wrapping it up and getting closer to our questions uh, section. Um, so a quick a recap. So we have uh, this a course uh, about AutoCAD Mechanical and I will post the link um, to the chat so you can uh, access it. Then uh, the one in works that focuses on successful, not only like transition from 2D to 3D, but also how to reuse your existing 2D data efficiently in 3D. And specifically, we'll talk about what data is use, useful and what are the three workflows that you can uh, use to associatively import your uh, legacy DW jet data and also back. So how can you use um, your 3D data back in AutoCAD? Uh, and finally, this course that focuses more on you know best practices of 3D design. So you, you can see logical sequence, effective 2D transition, and then um, a nice uh, 3D design with uh, intent. I will post the links um, in a second. Well, and uh, um, Let's uh, jump into uh, questions. So let's see if we have any questions. Okay, so it looks like we don't have uh, any questions at the moment, but uh, we have some time. Uh, and first of all, you can type your question if you have any comments or feedback for us or questions, or alternatively, you can raise your hand. There is a button for that, and we will just unmute uh, your line and we'll have a talk. Okay, so let me share this um, links, the ones that I mentioned with uh, all of you. Okay, these are the courses uh, that I, I just mentioned and how you can access them. Um, and uh, let me check the questions again. It looks like we do not have any, uh, so we will wrap the session up uh, and uh, you will receive the recording of uh, this session with the links uh, to the courses and registration link to the next uh, meetup. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Huge thanks to Lauren and um, Tom for their presentations. And uh, we'll try to invite um, Inventor Product Management team on a quarterly basis. So uh, they, they would share uh, product updates uh, with all of you. Um, and uh, we'll have interesting speakers every month. And the topic of the next month is uh, factory design uh, solutions uh, that we have for, uh, for our customers. With that, huge thanks again, and uh, we'll see you uh, the second Thursday of February. It's going to be February the 13th. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Everybody have a good day. Thank you.